Hutchinson suffered at Arkansas. He was pulled as the starter at the last minute last week against Central Florida because he didn't pass some balance tests and was still suffering from headache. But he is set to go tonight. He will start. The doctor said that he passed every test. It's a good thing because he has been raring to go between the hedges. He grew up about an hour away. He's a lifelong Georgia fan. He said it's a dream come true to play here at Sanford Stadium. He looked very poised, focused, and full of clarity in his warm-up today. Winning is an attitude. The last five minutes of last week's game, won this game today, you found out how to win. You found out what it took, and you went out there and laid it on the line. That's about as good a football game as you can play right there in the first half. Then we came out in the second half and did what we need to do to win. You put yourself in a great position. Just don't take anything for granted. We know how we got here. We worked every day. We worked every day, and we hadn't given up. It hadn't been a great year, but let me tell you something. You always remembered for what you do in November. And we'll finish this thing off strong. Good job. Good job. 1892 and is as hot and heavy as ever here in 1999. The 16th-ranked Georgia Bulldogs entertain the Auburn Tigers. Allowed in the air per game. The opening kickoff is next. The is set to kick it off. With Aris Robinson and Tim Carter are deep. And we are underway. And it's Robinson in the end zone. He'll take a knee. Play under center. And there is Ben Leard handing off to Heath Evans. Instead, it's around the right side. What a reverse. And now I'll take the snap. Here's Leard to throw for the first time tonight. And it's complete to Tavares Robinson. And a great effort with Larry Mann draped on his back to pick up the extra. Yard line. Near straight drop back. Middle screen. Got him at it. Tavares Robinson. And he again has enough for the first down. Pick up a 10 on the play. Something on the line here. A chance to be bowl eligible should they win their final two games. Watch the crossing route underneath, Steve. Here's Lear with plenty of time. Throws to the sideline. It's complete for Maris Robinson, and he's knocked out of bounds. The third first down play for Robinson in this drive. Pick up a 14 yards there, and Heath Evans supplies a solid block. See, Ronnie is picking up as they move down the field. Robinson now has three catches for 34 yards. And dump it into the flat to Ronnie Daniels. And Daniels is brought down just shy of the five-yard line after a pickup of 19. And the Auburn passing game cooking on all cylinders. Steve, either D either Daniels' man got picked or he was on second and goal from the five. No gain on the completion of Diamond. Again, has time. Throws. Touchdown. Got a man. It's Clifton Robinson. Touchdown, Auburn. Clifton Robinson runs what's called a swirl route. Steve, they've been so successful running the crossing routes. What Robinson does is he turns in like he's running the crossing route and then spins around and comes back to the outside. That's why he was so open there in the end zone, and Lear delivers it on the money. Clifton Robinson had switched to tailback after spending a couple of seasons at wide receiver, and now he's back to the receiver, and he just received that touchdown. Damon Duval pumps through the extra point. And it's an 80-yard scoring drop. 46-yard line. Carter, straight drop to throw. Feels the pressure, trying to get out of the fumble. Football's loose. Auburn has it. And it's Quinton Reese on the fumble recovery for Auburn. Steve, there are some times when, as a quarterback, you just have to say, all right, this isn't going to happen. It's going to break down. you got to give it up. Quincy Carter tried too hard there to make something happen, and the result is disastrous. Three wide receivers out to the right. Here's Lear to throw. He's looking left. Now rolling to his right and throws on the run. Trying to break a couple of tackles is Marcel Willis, but he won't get enough for the first down. And let's see what Lear has planned here. Out of the shotgun. Lear to throw. Middle screen back to Dallas Robinson, and he won't get the first down that time. Tim Wansley, the solid catch. Off, but pressure there. Here's Lear under some pressure. He'll scramble, and just before he's getting released, and he's got a man down the sideline. It's Marquise Cooper, and he's dropped at the 10-yard line. Tim Wansley finally got to him. Big play for Auburn. Goes for 46 yards. No one, no one is going to. No one is going to accuse Ben Leard 
of being Randall Cunningham. Beard has got 9 of 11 for 123 yards. Out of the shotgun on first and goal from the 10. Lead the throw. Why not? Throw for the end zone. Got a man. Hockey Cooper. Touchdown. And it's the Ben Lear Show. 13-0. Auburn. A look at the War Eagle on the road. Steven, it appeared that Arantius Grant, the linebacker, had much. Back to get hit every single play. We spoke to Quincy Carter yesterday. He said, How many times are going to have the options? Hopefully, none. I mean, a bunch of times here tonight. Hunt is away. Marquise Cooper will let it bounce. And it takes a Georgia bounce, and they're able to down. All the 10 yard line. from their own 10 yard line, but they do show the comfort of a 14 nothing lead. Keith Evans able to break free. Here's Evans rumbling out to the 40 yard line. Pick up a 30 on the play before Larry Mann finally tripped him up. One of the things that Auburn needed, when they kept going with their tailbacks, they kept going with the 175, 180-pound. You see the time remaining on the play clock, and they just get it off. He's leading under some pressure. He's both got a man. He's Andre Daniel down the sideline to the 10-5. Touchdown, Auburn. Beats Jeff Harris on the play, 59 yards. And the explosive Auburn offense under the direction of Ben Leard. Steve, the thing about Ben Leard here is his composure. He sits in the pocket and waits and waits and delivers the ball on the money. So many times young quarterbacks are going to have the happy feet. In this case, Leard did not. He delivers it right on the money. Ronnie Daniels does the rest. Damon Duval is on to attempt his third extra point. Here's Quincy Carter to throw, steps up feeling the pressure, and he'll go down. Rumbaugh got him again along with Marcus Washington. And here's Reese Davis. Third down and 17. He got the playbook for third and 17. Carter down the sideline and nearly intercepted. Larry Cashin had the tremendous coverage on Jermaine Phillips. But Jermaine Phillips got the to go. You're down 21 points. You have no reason to trash talk. And of course, Cashin. Out of the shotgun, Lear will step up, got plenty of time, will throw, man wide open, it's Steve Evans, he's got the first down and then some. The Georgia defense has to do something. Noma Zoni up to this point has certainly been pushing all the right buttons. 75th year of that stadium, and in the final year. Incomplete pass, looking for Michael Greer, it was a bit too low, Antoine Nolan. In the shotgun position. Three wide receivers to the left and they spread the field. Walks it down the field. Ronnie Daniels got it. He's got 40, 40, 40. They take the angle and never catch him. Touchdown, Ronnie Daniels. Steve, coming into this game, we had heard that Jamie Henderson was going to be the man on Daniels. Instead, they've had a number of different people on him. In this case, it was Corey Robinson. Not only think Corey Robinson is a starter. He has no business being on their star player. There is a flag on the play, but the touchdown will count. It's for these. There's another figure to take a dip. Corey George's fourth first down. And they've got another. Make it five. Football is loose. And let's see. Auburn's got it. Adlai Trone, who Holly mentioned was shaken up and injured before, he comes up with a fumble recovery, and it's all going right for Auburn. Like so many other wide receivers and defensive backs in college football. I was going to say to run a little bit to keep the clock moving, but they've been completing all their fences. The clock has been moving. There's Keith Evans. Coach Tommy Tupperville said he's making things happen the last two games. Make it three games now. Evans will try it again. Bouncing off Pat Hughes there. Getting some of the tough yards. Where from the shotgun to throw. Gets the pressure. Got him in. It's Daniels. He's got the first down. And he's knocked out of the 21-yard line. 
Steve, I'm trying hard to think of a, of a wide receiver in college football who, after he gets the ball, is as powerful as Ronnie Daniels. ESPN2. This is a third and four play for Ben Lear. Lear to throw. Got him in. No surprise, it's Daniels. And he is brought down inside the five yard line. Pick up a 10 on the play. Field goal. Duval has caught a touchdown, by the way, on a fake. Here's a 17 yard field goal attempt, we believe. And he kicks it away, and it is good. Now the horn sounds for real. Ben Leard, a brilliant first half, includes four touchdown passes. It's 31 0 in favor of War Eagle. Here's Reese Davis. Team at halftime, they've got to start over here in the second half. He's particularly worried about how much Auburn's offense is on the field. He says our offense has to make some plays and stay out there. And Tommy Tupperville, Todd, I asked him your question. Why didn't he go for any of those field goals early in the first half? He said, Holly, we ain't got nothing to lose. We're hanging all out. You saw us play two weeks ago. We're not a good team. We ain't got nothing to lose. We've got a lot of the field to work with. An option might be interesting. Hawk, fourth and two. Carter, the option, and it's not correctly called, but it's incorrectly run. They're short of the first down marker. There is a flag Steve, on the Steve, the flag is going to be holding on the tight end, and Auburn is going to get the stop that they want. Two play, two or three plays that Auburn says they might be away from the six and three or so, but look the other way as well. Another big completion to who had the running oh, and he breaks free, trying to break through another tackle. He's down to the five, and they finally drag him down to the three-yard line, and they are cheering like wild in that particular section for Auburn. 57 yards on the play for Ronnie Daniels. Ronnie Daniels, Steve, is able to get, get away with just a little bit of a shove. But when was the last time you saw a wide receiver? Just at the end of the play, he shoves up. But when was the last time a wide receiver was able to break this many tackles? One, two, three. On second and goal from the one. So the tight end in motion. And they get another touchdown. Lear, the keeper. And I'm sure he wanted that one for him. Here's Carter Price, got a man complete. 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Terrence Edwards. And Georgia is on the board, a 40-yard touchdown play. I so look forward to that next call when my son comes back from Spain and plays football. That's a, that's a proud father justifiably so. Good-sized compliment. You always hear about the tools and the athletic ability. Barely hear about the mind of a quarterback. That time they hand it off to Rusty Williams. They have gone exclusively to the ground game the last three miles away. This is the first time he has ever been on the field. At San this is a second and 12. Here to go. Off his back foot looking for big play Daniels. And the defense made a play. Jamie Henderson knocked away. Atlanta Braves, one of the many teams that can afford Ken Griffey Jr. Here's a chance, and Carter is taken down. Haven Field put him down on the field. This one, this certainly has not been all on him, but he has not been brilliant. And Corey hits a man right there! Touchdown, Terrence Edwards! And quite frankly, the score is misleading. It's 38 to nothing, 14 unanswered points now for Georgia. They connect to Ronnie Daniels, and that has been the story of the game. Ben Leard to Ronnie Daniels. Team in the 22-yard line. Quincy Carter stepping up under pressure, and he is taken down. Sacked on the play, Leo Carson, part of that front unit that is so strong for Auburn. Leo Carson was one of the defensive players that John Lovett, defensive coordinator, pointed out would be in a spy mode. If he couldn't get up the field, then he would linger. And that's what he does right there. Hanging behind, not pressing. Defensive line, who's currently the director of football operations here at Georgia. Here's Carter trying to run out of the way, and he is taken down by three. Where were you? Uh, I was at two, but you were right next to me. <laughs> Edwards now seven catches, 148 yards. Waiting for the indication, and there it is. Quincy Carter towards the side of the football field. 
Here's Ben Lear, one of the many stars for Auburn, completes the pass. It's to the tight end, Lorenzo Diamond, for the pickup of OS. Guys who practice so hard during the week, don't get the dress, don't get the uniform, and don't get the travel. Excellent choice. Way to go, Howie Zuda. Maybe after those tournaments. Incomplete pass as they were looking just about down to the goal line. Leard's still at quarterback, he'll take a knee. You know he doesn't want out of this game. He wants to kneel down as the clock expires, and he will run off Sanford Stadium's field for the first time ever, and he will do so a winner in an Auburn. Won seven of their last eight games here. They'll go to 15 and seven here in Athens. The home team will have to wait for their win in the next millennium, I believe, Steve. The final score, Auburn pulls it out in blowout fashion early. They win 38 to 21. For Todd Christensen and Holly Rowe, this is Steve Levy. Thanks for watching, everybody. We send you to Nashville. Mark Jones and Sean Salisbury, Kentucky Advantage.